Kieran here from KJH Woodworking. Welcome back to the channel. Today we are going to make a charcuterie board, some coasters and a wine caddy to hold two wine glasses. So let's get stuck in. This piece is significantly larger than what I actually need. So we're gonna cut this in half. Your jigsaw is the way to go when cutting rough lumber. It's a lot less likely to bind than a circular saw. Okay, so you could now just flatten and sand that up and that would make quite the nice cutting board or security wood, but it wouldn't be a KJH woodworking project if we didn't throw some epoxy in. What we're gonna do is we're gonna make a cut through there so we can split it and then have a river of epoxy running through the center. We're gonna offset the cut. That's gonna make sense towards the end of the video when we go to make our coasters and our wine caddy. So stick around and you'll see why we've done that. The main reason I cut this first was now it fits through my planer for flattening. So I just made the process so much smoother. With any epoxy project, you wanna remove the bark because that is the weakest point. So eventually the bark, particularly after expanding and tracking with the changing of seasons, is gonna separate from your timber. As you can see, it started to already. So you wanna get rid of all of that. Now you can just tear it apart, manhandle a little bit, or I find the easiest way is using a chisel to get rid of the bulk, then a sander to clean that up. So you wanna get the chisel in between the two layers, start the separation, and then it pulls off. I like to use an 80 grit pad with an inference pad, and that's what they're called, um, which is a spongy attachment for your orbital sander, which will conform to the shape. Now we're gonna whip up a quick mold out of some malamine. If you're not aware of how to make a mold, I've done a video which I'll link wherever up top um, and in the description below of a video where I go through a whole process step by step, quite informative. Um, so I'm gonna whip through this, I'm gonna make two molds and we're gonna then get to prepping for the pour. So you want to mix up a small amount of epoxy to seal your edges with. And by sealing the edges, what that will do is prevent any air from coming out during your pour. So once you've popped all the bubbles in your epoxy, you're not going to get a trail of air bubbles seeping through the timber. What we're going to do is leave it to go off until it is tacky. So with my particular epoxy, it generally takes around eight to 12 hours. So I'll seal these edges tonight, and then in the morning I'll pour the epoxy. Four minutes is a really long time to hand mix some epoxy. Just saying. Just a quick safety note. I don't have a respirator on, uh, which I probably should, but in my shed, I have a really good dust filtration system with HEPA filters, which actually filter out all the fumes and stuff in here. Every 60 seconds in my shed, my air is filtered and all of the fine particles are removed from that air. Again, best practice, wear a respirator. I wear a respirator for the full pour, but using such a small amount of epoxy, I, let's just say I forget or I neglect to wear a respirator, but best practice, respirator on all the time when working with epoxy. So I've gone ahead and popped the timbers in the mold and what I've done is just use some blocks to secure the timber down to the mold. And I've made sure when I put them in, to keep them away from the river. So when we're swirling and doing our pattern, the blocks don't get in the way. I use a window packer between the block and the timber to stop any overflow of epoxy actually sticking the block and the timber together. The plastic window packers just tap off straight away. Other thing you can do is cover, the, cover a block of timber in some tape. Let's mix some epoxy. Okay, so these have been drying for a week and I'm really happy with how they've turned out. 
Couple of tips though, as you are letting it dry, so once you've poured your epoxy, you would have seen a swirl it. What you wanna do is come back every two hours and re-swirl, re-pop your bubbles with your heat gun because that's gonna keep your pigment at the top. Otherwise, the pigment will slowly settle over time and you won't get the same effect. So make sure you're coming back every couple of hours rather than just leaving it to dry. Otherwise, you'll be unhappy. You've only got to do that for sort of eight to 10 hours, but gives a much better result. Let's get these out. This is why you use packaging tape and mold release. Don't skimp to try and do things quicker because it doesn't work. That, my friends, was horrendous. So I'm gonna do the next one very differently. I'm gonna cut out my strip for my coasters before I take the base off, so then I can just put it through the thicknesser. We're gonna thickness the board down, but we're gonna do it with the back in place because I didn't use the packaging tape. So we're gonna use the back as a reference, run this through until the top's flat, flip it over, then thickness off the base. So we've got those thickness. Now let's talk what we've got out of it. So we've got two charcuterie boards and we've got two strips of material where we're gonna split it down the middle. We're gonna use half for a wine caddy and then half for coasters. Easiest way to rip this down would be to do it on the bandsaw. I don't own a bandsaw, so I'm gonna do it on a table saw. So to do that, we're gonna pass it through the table saw up about 10 mil, flip it over, go again, keeping the same side against the fence until we split it down the middle, leaving about three mil in the middle and then we'll finish it off with a handsaw. One thing I do like to do is just give it a quick sand to get rid of all the planar marks before I go to shaping. So let's get stuck into shaping. We're gonna start with the wine case. So I drew up a couple of templates in Fusion 360 of what I'm trying to achieve just to make the layout simple. So all I've got to do is drill three holes and then we can shape it. Those are available to download in the description below and by doing so it helps support the channel. So thank you very much. Now we are going to cut these out glue these onto the face here with some spray on adhesive, and then we can drill out our holes, cut everything out, and then move on to the charcuterie boards. Now you've got all your holes drilled, you've cut out your slots. We're gonna cut the bulk off the corners and then we are gonna sand to our line. So we'll get within two mil of the line with a jigsaw or bandsaw and then we'll sand the rest. Then we're gonna throw a round over or chamfer and give the whole thing good sand to say 180 grit. And then we'll water pop the grit, um, which is basically mist it um, with water and then let it dry and then sand again. That sanding process is gonna be the same across the board, coasters and the charcuterie boards. So we're just gonna whip through that, then we're gonna get stuck into the coasters followed by the charcuterie board. Quick tip with your coasters, sand your coaster to its final sanding grit and water pop it before you cut it up into its coasters because it sucks to try and sand an 80 by 80 square. So it's much easier to sand this because you can hold one edge, sand this, spin it around, go again. So we're gonna cut this up, then we're gonna round over the edges and then we'll give it a quick sand, water pop it again, and then we will throw that in the oil and get to the charcuterie board.
time for the main event now, the charcuterie board. Now, you could just sand this, round over the edges and be done and call it finished. But what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna drag Heather out into the workshop and we're gonna put a nice little curve on each edge. One of these is a wedding gift, so we're actually gonna engrave it with a message and then sand them all up, oil them and call that done. And that, my friends, is a wrap on this project. This is how you can turn a simple one board epoxy pour into three projects just by cutting it up and building it to a certain size. Each pour got us the wine caddies, the coasters and the boards and it took me a day and it came out fantastic and I'm really happy with it. If you want to see a deep dive into how to make the epoxy mold, I'll put that on the screen now. Other than that, guys, have a good one. I'll catch you on the next one. Cheers, guys.